Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm painting watercolour Christmas cards with a robin as the subject. I know, maybe not the most original idea, but hey, who doesn't like robins? I hope I've made them fun and easy to paint for you. I certainly enjoyed painting them myself. Here's a little rogues gallery of some um, little chaps that I painted earlier. I'll be demonstrating the same techniques I used here in this video tutorial. And you may notice that I've used salt in the background. This is to make them more interesting and also to suggest falling snow. There was quite a lot of preparation for this little painting, but once all the colours were mixed and I got myself organised, then you'd be really surprised at how quickly I painted this robin. I painted it wet into wet and as I did in the background, I did sprinkle a little bit of salt um, over the bird. It went a little bit mad in some parts, as you can probably see. And here's just a couple of ideas of mine I'm showing you of how to um, use them in a card. I like to use aperture cards and all the links to my cards are in the description box below. But clearly you can paint them straight onto watercolour paper and you can stick them onto a, a card that you buy. I also have links in the description box to my drawing templates, including this little robin, and there's also information about the materials that I use. For this picture I started off um, working on the background. Um, you can paint the robin first if you like, and um, I'll talk more about that later on in the video. But for this little picture I'm wetting the background with some clean water. I'm being particularly careful around some of the areas, um, like the beak because you want to try and keep that dry so the paint doesn't bleed into it. If you work quite slowly then wet it, let the paint, um, let the water sink in and then re-wet it and you'll probably find that's um, much easier for working wet into wet. I got all my colours ready before I started and um, I've got pools of colour of ultramarine blue burnt sienna and then the other colour is a grey mixed with the ultramarine and the burnt sienna approximately um, equal quantities of each it's up to you you could have your background a little bit bluer you know to suggest sky maybe in the top area um, I do like to have a little bit of the burnt sienna in there because it does add some warmth to the picture otherwise everything if it's all blue can seem rather cold which you may not want so I'm sort of dropping in these colours. It doesn't matter really where you put them. It's entirely up to you. Every picture I painted was different. It's really important to keep everything wet and to paint um, very carefully around the bird. The light is going to be coming from the left on this bird. So the left hand side of the bird is going to be the lightest. You could bear that in mind and make the left hand side of the wash darker so you're going to have a dark against a light but it's not critical so don't worry about that however you place the colours as long as you keep everything wet it's all going to work out wonderfully trust me the size of this painting is approximately five inches by five inches I did use a smaller image in the two aperture cards that you saw but I think doing it this size, particularly if you get a nice, um, loose, salty background that is working really well, then you can use a bigger aperture or, you know, make your card that bit bigger. I'm going to show you how I put on the um, wash on this in its entirety because um, although it's a bit slow I think it's really useful particularly for beginners to see how these washes are laid on and the importance of keeping everything wet. You can see the paint is glistening um, which is a sign that I'm keeping everything wet. Usually I say if things are starting to dry then use a spray bottle but in this case you can't really do that because you're going to wet the robin and it's important to keep those areas dry so the background doesn't bleed into them. But again, if, if it does, you can, um, there's lots of ways that you can actually change things and adjust things. You could pull out the paint um, with a little brush. You could use a little bit of gouache on it. 
So again, um, it's no cause for concern. Now finally, a little sprinkling of table salt. If the paint is extremely wet, then you will get a blizzard. You have blizzard effects, which can look quite nice. Um, if it's too dry, then the salt won't work at all because what it's doing is it's picking up the moisture from the paper. And we think that by doing several of these cards, you're going to learn an awful lot about watercolour drying times, as well as having rather a lot of robbing cards for your friends and family. This dried really nicely, I think. It was the sort of effect I was after. I didn't get it on all my pictures, but I rather like this. It's, um, it's not a blizzard, but it's nice and soft, and I like the soft greys in there, and it's got a sort of warm feel about it. Paint the eye first with a dark mix of your ultramarine and burnt umber and use a very, very tiny brush. And don't make the eye too big because it's a mistake that I can sometimes make and I know lots of people do. So just a very small eye with that tiny little bit of white. I wanted to paint this robin in a very loose way and I didn't really want a lot of hard edges. I wanted all the different colour areas to blend into each other. Some of my pictures were more successful than others in this regard, but you'll see what happens with this one. What I did first was I wet the whole area with clean water. You can see I'm doing that now. I have pools of cadmium orange, cadmium red light, and a purple mixed from ultramarine and light red, already mixed. I started on the shadow side of the bird using the purple mix and just increasing the depth of colour over on the right hand side as I worked. I didn't want a bright purple and I think the ultramarine or cobalt blue with light red does make a nice natural purple for things like shadows, particularly in landscapes and in this case on the bird. In order to avoid the edges drying into hard edges, what I did was I rinsed off my brush in clean water, got rid of a lot of the water on a tissue and then just touched the edges of the painted area to soften them. I'm sprinkling a little bit of salt into each area as I go along. Next I use the brown, which is a mixture of um, ultramarine and burnt umber, to do the head and the wing, as you can see. Again, I use some um, darker colours in the wash as well, particularly on the right hand side of the head. And you will see that I added um, perhaps a little bit of the purple in there as well, which darkens the brown. And once I'd finished that, again, I sprinkled a little bit of salt in there. If you're enjoying this video and finding it useful then check out the description box where you'll find some links to other Christmas card videos that I've made recently. Where is this description box I've been asked several times and it's a very good question. On my iPad it's a little downward pointing arrow that looks a bit like a V that's grey on the bottom right hand side of the video screen. On the desktop look for the greyed out words show more on the left hand side of the video screen. Failing that you'll just have to ask a friend I'm afraid. Goodness knows why they make it so difficult to find. Again I'm trying to remember to keep the edges soft all the time. Although the painting didn't take very long clearly it would be starting to dry out. We're getting into the orange now on the breast. This is cadmium orange which is a lovely colour. It's quite strong. You don't want the breast to be too pale and then to liven it up again I've got that nice cadmium red light. I tried the cadmium red dark but it's a totally different colour and um, the light I think worked really well with the cadmium orange.
again softening the edges and sprinkling little bits of salt into areas that are still wet. You can see I left a little bit of white around the eye which I think worked quite well and um, I left the beak white at this stage as well. It's a sort of diamond shape, you'll see it in the close-ups and I left that white diamond shape. Um, what I did later on is I just put a little stroke underneath it and I felt that worked well with the beak without being too fussy. Nearly finished. It took about five minutes to reach this stage where I've painted most of the robin. So what I suggest is if you do like this sort of loose quick effect on painting the bird, then have a go yourself. Try and do it in my time. Try and paint it in five minutes or even try and better that. I used a mixture of the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine again to paint in the twig. I'm just painting a little bit underneath like this, just gives the impression of the snow on the top. This is the good thing about watercolour, you can get the effect of snow by just leaving the white paper. I added a, just a touch of shadow colour on the snow using a diluted mix of my purple. I'm now mixing up um, a dark brown again and using a small brush. You can see on the close-up here I was talking about leaving the diamond shape for the beak and you can see that quite clearly and then all I did was put a little thin line underneath and I thought that was really quite effective without going to an awful lot of fuss. As a tip here be very careful with your pencil lines, I had to make mine quite dark so that you could see them on the video but um, I did find I had an awful lot of trouble actually rubbing them out even though I'd used a soft pencil. And now the little chap's feet are going in quite simply with a very small brush and a dark mix of the brown. So looking at the picture when I'd finished, I was a bit concerned about the wing on the right hand side there. I felt it was sort of sticking out at a bit of an odd angle. So um, I took some brown and just adjusted that and just increased the shadow and um, put a tiny bit of dark on the left hand side to balance it. And I was, I was happier with that. Don't fuss too much in these final stages, but um, it's okay to make sort of these alterations like I'm making. Quite often I found I've had to adjust the beak slightly and possibly the eye as well. Occasionally I've left too much white around it, which makes the bird look as if it's been shocked or something. <laughs> as I said earlier on in the video, um, you can paint the robin first before you put the background on. I'll show you a speeded up version of how I did it on this picture. I was looking at him and thinking he looks a bit too grumpy to be a Christmas robin, so I might have to do a few alterations a bit later on. I carefully wet around the bird with, um, with the clean water and then I dropped in the colours as I did before. Um, I didn't want to go too dark on this and um, so the colours are a little bit weaker. But when you're putting them on, make sure that you do add some darker tones um, above that snow on the branch. So there's a little bit of negative painting going on here. The snow on the branch is standing out now because I've put those darker tones over it. It's a good thing, isn't it, about watercolour, is that you can, um, you can leave the white of the paper showing to stand for the snow rather than having to actually put white paint on.
and then a little sprinkling of salt on again. I chewed him up a little bit. I got rid of some of the white around his eye and just slightly altered the shadow under his beak. But it's amazing, isn't it? I'll just, you know, these very, very tiny little brush marks could make such a difference to the character of, in this case, the, the little robins. Before I end the video, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy Christmas. And also, I'd like to say a very special thank you to my subscribers. Subscribing really helps to support my channel and promote it on YouTube. Also, if you like what I do here, you'll be notified of content so you won't miss anything. Talking of which, I'm going to have a watercolour course coming up in the new year, so look out for that. Bye for now.